Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop and oh no, not the number eight. So we moved and everything really came through very well. There was very little that was broken except for one box got wet and I didn't realize it until afterwards and it was the box that had my seven, my eight and several of my longer panel saws. And unfortunately, water doesn't treat them very well. Now, thankfully, this shop and my last one are in nice dry basements uh, where I really haven't had any problem with water at all. And so I, I don't have a huge issue with rust. It's an air conditioned space and there isn't a whole lot of moisture. Everything stays about the same, about 68 degrees, about 40% humidity all year round. Now, when I lived down south or out in Pennsylvania, that was not the case. Uh, the basement there was wet, uh, and outside the humidity was always changing, and there were lots of problems with rust. The nice thing is, for the most part, rust really isn't that big of a deal, other than it's unsightly and you don't want it getting onto your tools. So today I want to talk about rust prevention, but I also want to talk about what happens when rust actually happens. How do we fix it? Now, there's different levels of rust and how you address it. Most of the time, if you're using the tools and rust occurs, it's, it's not going to be deep rust. It's going to be a surface rust that needs to be cleaned off. And that's relatively easily. But if you get into pitting and there's other things that it's been sitting for a while, and usually that means years of rusting, then you may need to go something a little deeper. I have a whole bunch of videos on restoring tools like that. Go take a look at those. Today I'm going to be talking about the surface rust of, oh no, some water got into my shop and it's really not that bad, but I need to take it off and prepare the steel. I use red scouring pads. I just get the off-brand ones. These ones actually came from the dollar store. And some sandpaper. This one is 180 grit. Somewhere around the 150 to 200 grit is great for a lot of it. And if you really want the sheen back, you can start with this and then go up to higher grits as they need. I'm going to put down some cardboard just to protect my bench because I don't want the dust working its way in there. And I'm going to start by not applying any lubrication to it. Sometimes I'll start with some WD-40 if it's a little deeper. But for this, where it's just the surface rust, I'm going to leave it dry. This one's a little bit coarser, so I'm going to start with the sandpaper. And I'm going to go until the red disappears. Yeah, I can still see some outlines, some of the darker stuff in there. I don't care about that. I just want to get rid of the red rust. And like that, we've gotten rid of that. I'm going to bring in the scouring pads. It's a little bit finer. And it allows me just to make sure everything's good. And that's looking pretty good. I haven't had to use WD-40, so I'm actually just going to bring in a dry rag and wipe off any of the excess dust. And like that, we're pretty good. I generally don't take the tools down to pristine shiny. I like to leave a little bit of history on there. And sometimes the history is, oh, sometime in the past, it got wet. There's still some staining on there, some of the dark colors, but all the red rust is gone. And this will work perfectly fine. Now, if it's deeper and it's not coming off with a sandpaper and Brillo pad, then I put, might put some down some WD-40 and go at it with a slightly coarser sandpaper. But most of the time with surface rust that just happens in your shop, that's not gonna be a problem. And that goes the exact same for my planes. Though sometimes with the cast iron, it goes a little bit deeper and I have to go to something a little heavier. Thankfully this time, it's pretty easy. Just a few passes with this. I'm gonna come through the Brillo pad and see what it looks like underneath. There's still a little bit in there. Let's go at it again. And you can still see there's a few dark spots on here where there's some staining, but I've gotten rid of all of the red rust. That's what's important. Then continue on all the other sides. Now the problem is we've taken off all the protection on here, so any amount of moisture in the air could cause rust. And especially with the cast iron, I want to clean that down. So I'm going to start with a simple 3-in-1 oil or some other light oil. I'm just going to put some onto a rag. And if you don't like 3-in-1 oil, then grab any oil you like. Sometimes I'll even use boiled linseed oil. And I just want to wipe down all the surfaces and make sure that the oil gets on it completely. And work it in. The metal loves the oil. And just let it soak into the pores. Now the next problem is you can see these rags are getting dirty. And if I take this tool to the wood right now, I'm just going to be getting anything that's on there into the wood. And I don't want that, especially with oak where it'll do weird things with the tannins. So I grab a clean dry rag and I'm going to be kind of wiping off the oil that was on there. And that allows me to see that's how much dirt came off. Flip it over and I do the other side. And you're not going to be taking off all of the oil. The oil actually works into the steel. The steel is fairly porous on microscopic levels, so that's not a problem. Uh, don't worry about taking off the oil because we're actually going to do some more to it in a moment. And the last thing I like to do to actually protect it is I use some of my homemade hard wax. This is just beeswax and linseed oil. I've got videos on how to make it, as well as I sell it on my website if you don't want to. But I just rub that into the steel and I make sure I get every spot with it. And then I can come back and wipe off the excess. 
Now, if you're gonna be in an area where there's a lot of rust, you might need something more than this. And then there are a bunch of things like bow shield and other things. And I've been wanting to do a test on those for a while, but haven't gotten around to it. This is actually part of my regular rust prevention regime as I'm regularly wiping down all my tools. I'm oiling them and waxing them. I try and do it on a regular basis, about once every six months. Um, particularly tools that I don't use a lot, I spend some more time making sure that they stay waxed and oiled. Usually I leave this heavy coat of wax on there because next time I use it, it's just gonna get polished down and wiped off eventually. And it doesn't hurt anything at all. It actually helps the plane. But if you don't like it, then take a rag, especially after the wax has sit for a little while and you can come back and polish it down and wipe it smooth. It's amazing how well the tool works when you actually leave it on there and just let it go. It's a little bit of lubrication that allow it run smoother. But woodworking is all about looks. So if you don't like it, go ahead and polish it off. And with a couple minutes of elbow grease and work, tools are ready to go back on the rack and ready for the next use. Now I usually do a rust prevention system about once every six months where I go through everything. I've got a couple videos on that as well as I have videos on uh, how do you do it if it's completely pitted and there's other problems and tool restoration. So if you want to see those I'll, I'll try and leave a link to those down below. Rust, it's not as big a problem as people think and for the most part it's not actually a problem it's just something that ooh, I don't like the look of it. So fix it. It's pretty quick. So I hope you liked the video. It's amazing what you can do with a Brillo pad and some sandpaper and a little bit of elbow grease and you can get them back up to working order and have a lot of fun. If you do have any questions, thoughts, or ideas or things that you do differently, let me know that down below. I do love to read through those. Sometimes I hear different things I've never heard before and I really like that. So thank you. And as well, it helps out the channel. Anytime you like, comment, share, subscribe and do all those fun things, you get us in front of more people and help the channel grow. And it really means a lot. So thank you for that. But if you really want to be amazing and join these people over here, those are some of the patrons on Patreon, and they are the most gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful, benevolent people in the world. And without patrons or members, we would not be here. You guys are the ones that make this shop happen. We are completely sponsored by you. So thank you. And if you like that and would like to help us out, think about becoming a patron or a member. Click the join button down below. I think they'll do it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. One quick caveat though, if you happen to be in a Disney shop, make sure that you don't use three-in-one oil. Make sure that you use Rusty's medicated bumper ointment. Do not try the green ice cream!